Hi, Dr. Mark Uridel here with a manual technique video. Keep in mind, this is a demonstration of the practical application of information in a related course. I recommend that you take a hands-on workshop to learn these techniques in more detail before applying them. Enjoy! Looking at the wrist anatomy, we see a number of muscles coming from this common flexor tendon and crossing the wrist. You have muscles that attach to the carpals, like the flexor carpi ulnaris, and you have deeper muscles that attach across the wrist, go through the carpal tunnel, and then attach to the fingers. The flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus form eight tendons that cross through the carpal tunnel. There is a flexor retinaculum that closes the tunnel. We remove the flexor retinaculum. You can see these tendons crossing through the carpal tunnel, which is right here, and going to the fingers. When working with carpal tunnel syndrome, we're going to be massaging these muscles to release tension as these muscles pass through the carpal tunnel. The deep flexor tendons are often implicated in carpal tunnel syndrome. Begin by doing some glides along the flexor tendons. Start with palmer, work into finger, and after several finger glides, you can work into knuckle glides. Using deeper pressure as I'm going, engage the tissue more firmly. You can also use thumb petrissage walking up the forearm into those deep flexors, all the way from the common flexor origin at the medial epicondyle of the humerus, all the way down to carpal tunnel. Another good way to release these is to actually place the wrist in extension and put a, put a gentle stretch on those muscles and tendons. So I'm adding that stretch to the knuckle glides, which increases the intensity, but also improves the amount of release. You can also do patient-generated extension of the wrist to stretch again. Now I'm using deep thumb glides, synchronized with the patient-generated wrist extension to release the flexors. 